amongst themselves with Jerusalem, God says they shall be cut in pieces. Now, I'm going to tell you the meaning behind that. Because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Yes, so America has burdened themselves with having keeping us hostage here, but that's who we are. They're going to be cut in pieces. They took our land, the, our land of Jerusalem. The Bible says, you burden yourself with that, and you shall be cut in pieces. Think of all the times when they passed you over for the job. Think of all the times when you was done dirty by our enemies, man. That's the anger you got a chance. But think of your fathers if you never been to. All right? Think when they was whipping our fathers, man. Cutting our women's stomach open. Big white men beating little black women upside their head. Think of that. Some brothers' kids have died. Wife has left them. Uh, many things have happened to us, man. But in the kingdom of heaven, man, all that stuff is going to go away. We got to keep our mind on it. Keep the soldiers in mind of the mission. The mission is getting the kingdom of heaven. Ruling over these devils that oppress us. That's the mission. That's the goal. church and stuff like that, they don't follow the Bible, so they don't have to understand it. Before you read That's it, not true. hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, we're going to read it out the Bible. I, I, ain't gonna, I understand I'm, that was a general statement. I understand, I understand. The book of Psalm, chapter 111, verse 10, Watch this. No. the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear, you know what it is, the fear of God, what is it? It's personal. It's personal? It's not personal. Yeah, it is. It, it could be, it's a personal I'm, Personal journey. Let me let, let, let me let me get it because we got it we got it because people don't know what the fear of the Lord is. Fear of God, like, like you got a father, you got an earthly father, right? Yeah. You you not gonna say you yeah you got it okay it's the obedience now you just said it. so the fear of the Lord is knowing that he gonna get into that butt if you don't do what he said that's like right your, like your earthly father if he tell you to do a chore yes. and, and you don't do it. When you come home, you know it's going to be some lightning going on. Right. And you know what's going to happen. So you fear him, and it says, and you got a good respect for your father. You already understand. That's what the fear is. We're supposed to have that fear for the Most High God. So, respect. what did it say? A good understanding. Read it from the top. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So to begin to get wisdom, you first must fear God. If you ain't scared of what God going to do in judgment, you got your own thoughts and stuff like that, you're not going to fear him. But I'm I'm scared of the Most High God because I understand what he can do to them. Go ahead, put that up. can a person fear something they don't even understand? That's why we out here to get a sense. That's why the people, that's why the people just got to... understand. Okay. Yeah, hold, on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to read that next. Hold on. I'm, let me get this scripture, and then I'm going to show you what you're talking about. Read that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So to begin to get wisdom, you got to first fear the Lord. Read. A good understanding. A good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments. You ain't going to. What that mean? No. Read that last part again. A good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments. What that mean? Interpret that. Read it again. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. What's that mean? Those that follow his commandments have a good understanding. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm right. right. So I want you to know that. No, I ain't gonna change it. That's the word you read. That's just what it is. Read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord first to get wisdom, you must fear the Lord. A good understanding has all they that do his commandments. So when you're keeping God's commandments like having your friends on, women in, in skirts and dresses, you know you're supposed to be in the skirt and dress, right? When you do those commandments, you have a Show good understanding. Deuteronomy, watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. And you know this is all love, sis. Oh, I love it. I love the it. woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. The word pertain means belongs to. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And a man ain't supposed to have on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment? Dress, skirt. It's, it's, some things can, it's a 
Oh, sis, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that, sis. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Read it, read it for the The book of Deuteronomy, what chapter 24 say? Chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What that mean? I know exactly what it means. Tell the people so we can edify the people. But I'm, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to say this. Because you are speaking about... So when your father finna give you a whooping, you no. say, that father, let me, before you whoop me, let me just say this. No. The Bible is what, what, what it no, is. No, okay. That's right. Reading the Bible, I've learned that you have to take into consideration what they were talking about, when they were talking about it, who they were talking to. It's the situation. So, is it a law or not? Is it, it, the Bible? It, is is this what we reading a uh, law or not? It's laws and precepts. Is this what we read right here a law or or not? And I noticed as I was speaking to you when you didn't want to hear something, I. You, 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 you no, because you're fucking up against your Bible. All we're doing is reading the Bible. That's right. We out here for, no. We we out here to edify the people. But I'm not telling you what my own boss is. Then, me and you can have an argument. Because, me and we'll go back and forth. Because you you think one way and I think another way. But when it's coming out the Bible, I'm shut up and you should shut up. Because the Bible, God said, do this. So, okay. God's ready. If I would have said, hey, sis, I'm going to wear pants, then you can say, then you can say, brother, it might be this or this and that, and then me and you will have back and forth conversation. But if if you come out the Bible, then we should humble to the Bible and do what the Bible says. That's right. Right. Unto men. Right. But if me and you, if this was cold and me and you was having a conversation, then we can, we'd go back and forth. We'd never get each other point. But when God speaks, which is this Bible, we should either humble down or it means we don't believe and we shouldn't listen at all. That, that makes sense? It makes sense. Let's read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. So when I ask you, what do that mean? Um, that, if I ask you uh, what that means, what do you see or how do is interpreted? Did you get it? That's what I'm asking you. So I want you to get a good understanding. It's not the the literal you or nothing. It's the same. You know what? I didn't take it as something. Says that when I'm asked the question, I have to have time to okay. answer it. I, I'm like that too. I just can't just blur out. Okay. Anything. I have to think. You right? Like, you right? Like, because I'm like that too. I, it take it take me a second too. Sometimes I got to think about what's been said. Okay. I got. You. We we on the same page now. I know we are. I think a woman we shall are. not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now you own. What what is that? Well, you know what? When I read, when I read that, at times past, my interpretation has been meant for when we are in the house of worship, not just period. I'm taking this meant for house of worship. We come to the house of place of worship. That the apparel and the garments and the should be a certain code. When we come to the house of worship, but outside of the house of worship, that is not as black okay. and white. Okay, so, so um, the sister said that uh, her when you read uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, the woman should not wear that which pertains to a man. So she she got out of it that you know house of worship. That's that's supposed to go down. We're supposed to be the garments and all that. We're supposed to wear those things, right? And then outside the house of worship, then we can kind of be free. That's what you're saying. Some degree because times have changed. Okay, then. So, it's just the truth of the matter. Times have changed. Not to say we're supposed to change that, but right. So that's what we do we, we, we gonna we gonna give you we we gave you the law. Now we're gonna give you the punishment because precept must be on precept, law, uh, line upon line, here a little bit and there a little. So we're gonna go to Zephaniah to show you what the punishment of our people is if they don't, like it say the woman's supposed to wear what pertains to a man, right? So that means whatever belongs to a, a woman, she's supposed to wear that. That's right. And a man is not supposed to get caught in a dress or a skirt or high heels or this and that. They're right. not supposed to wear what a woman wear. But this is the punishment to them both. Go ahead. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice means when Christ come back. It's going to be a great sacrifice. That's Christ coming back. Go ahead. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. That's everybody on this board. The blacks is back. Native Americans. So, and all such as are clothed. And, and all such. 
that are what? As are clothed with strange apparel. Because what you got on is strange apparel to the most high. He gave you a dress code. It's a dress code. For, it, it distinguishes you from everybody else. That's right. When what like when you when you look at a, a Muslim women, they always be having them black long gowns to the foot and they had a face covered and stuff like that. That identifies them as a people. I don't know. I don't know. But I know. I, I, I know. I know more so now that they 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 Americanized because at first they didn't wear pants. Now they they, they still wear they, they top part, but they got pants. And now it's now they garments is coming up, and and now the pants is being shown. So they being Americanized because America do got an influence on people. So they, at, at, at first they didn't do that. They they, they covered up. And our nation, as our people, not individual, our people live by God's law. That's why he put it in the Bible, because he knew it was going to be a time that we will forget and have to go back into the Bible to remember how we were. So our, our, our women, our, even if they're single, and our married women, they dress in modest apparel. So let's get, let's read, let's read that again, and then we're going to go to modest apparel. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So when Christ come back, go ahead. That I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are called with strange apparel. So not having fringes on your garments is, is strange apparel too. Because he told you to put that on you. Along with having 100% clothing. When you read Leviticus 19 and 19, Deuteronomy 22 and 11, he told you to have 100% clothing. That's strange apparel to the most high. Fringes with a border of blue, not on your, your, your skirts and dresses, that's strange apparel. We're not supposed to go ask the other nations. We, but like, I mean, the tags don't say 100%, they may not be, but the fabric of it, like uh, cotton, linen, Yep, he said. Yep, he said don't wear none of that. It's in the Bible. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 19. Uh -huh. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. So he don't want the cattle to mix with other cattle. Thou shalt not sow thy field with a mingled seed. So he don't want your your seeds to, when you do your your gardens. He don't want you to mix seed. Uh, Esau or the white man. He 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 actually inject seeds into other seeds to try to make something. He don't want that. Go ahead. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. When he say woolen and uh, linen, he intertwine like you said. Come upon thee. Meaning come on your body. Get Deuteronomy 22 and 11. We're going to read it again. Because he always put it in multiple no, places. No, no leather and wool together. No leather suede. If it's a hundred percent. Watch this. If it, if you got a leather jacket. Yeah. And you got you got a hundred percent leather and you got a hundred percent suede. Yeah, the, 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 the inner workings of it can't be mingled, but they can be joined together. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-two, verse eleven: uh -huh. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of woolen and linen together. See, he don't want you inter intermingled together. That's it. He, because God requires us, we're a great nation, so he requires great things from us. That's right. And if we couldn't do it, he wouldn't give it to us. Right. Go ahead. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse shorts, as of woolen and linen together. Right. Okay. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four corners of thy best chair. On top of that, he says you're supposed to make fringes on, on the gar or the borders of your uh, vestures, meaning your garments. So, on your skirts, you're supposed to have this fringes with a ribbon of blue. The blue can be any color. The fringes, it can be any color. But he, the blue gotta be be blue. That's right. You can do navy, light blue. It gotta be blue. Cause that's what he distinctly said. The fringes he don't care about. He just said put fringes on your clothes. You 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 will see our the native Indian, Indians. They, they wore fringes on their garments because they, they actually are people. So that's, God gave that to us to distinguish us between the other nations. The other nations got their own, you know, their own uh, 
the dress codes and things that they do. God gave his people the same thing. And that when you see his people, you can you recognize them with the fringes. You can say, oh, that's an Israelite. Right. He know who or she know who she is. Right. right. That's right. And that's why he called you a, 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 a special people unto himself. Now let's read the modest apparel. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2. In verse 9, uh -huh. in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So our women is supposed to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel meaning they covered up. They, they covered up. Yeah, they, they, they covered up. They not letting their body, you know, you ain't supposed to see their curves, no camel toes, no hips. That's only for your husband. Right. We don't need to see that. That's, That's right. I was about the question about the Muslims you talking about in their dress. Yeah. They get behind closed doors. That no, in your house, that's what you do, in your house, but God said let your light so shine before men that people see your good work. So they can't see your good works if you don't have it on when you're walking up to and fro and about on the street. When you get in the house, they're not looking at your, your light. So you can, you can like to walk around in your house naked, that's you, in your house. Whatever you do in your house, that's you. But when you come outside your house, you're a representation of the Most High God that's and right. His people. That's right. Right? We, I'm, I'm going to read something for the sister and then I got you, alright? Just, just hold on to your question. Read that. With, it, First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. So we got to make sure the women got to adore themselves in modest apparel, meaning they cover it up. With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. What, you know what that means? Shamefacedness. No, shamefacedness means they got to, they got to, a meat spirit like a shyness. They're not looking brothers all in the eye like right now the world teach you that you 50 50 with the man. That's not in the Bible. The man is over the woman. So a woman ain't got no business staring in the man's face. So they gotta they're not shy, but they got a kind of meekness to when they speak it. You if that's what you say, but I'm just I gotta edify for the people. Alright? Read that. With shame facedness and sobriety. And, and being sober. With and you get that process with shame facedness and what? Sobriety. Sobriety meaning she gotta be sober. She should be sober at all times. Not with braided hair. Not with braided hair. Or or gold. Or gold. Or pearls. Or pearls. Or costly array. Or with costly array. Don't, don't meaning move your way, they making me move nowhere. Meaning, 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 your braids, your gold, and stuff, that shouldn't make you. Read. That shouldn't be the, what we're looking at. He ain't saying you can't wear it. He's just saying that shouldn't make you. The people should be like, damn, look at her hair. But don't it depend on that person who's looking with eyes they seeing me? That, it depends on that, but he, you can help him out. But, which becometh women professing godliness. Because you're an example. You're an example. You are an example. That's why. You got to help them out. That's right. So, okay, if you come out with pants, you got to help me with my lust spirit. Why? Because if I see you in pants, I'm a lustful man, so I'm going to be looking at you in your pants like, damn. But if you come covered up, then I'm going to look at you in a whole nother eye, meaning that sister got her stuff together, and I can only dream about or something. All right? That then speaks to that individual eye, too. That's right. Where he sees beautiful. It's like shopping. It ain't you go to the store beauty. and you see the young people today and they buy a candy gun and, and microwave gear and then you see people that know how to cook. But when you get to come to these young ladies, sir, no disrespect, I like to ask this question. All right, Dan. Uh, finish it up. With good works. With good works. Your good work should be you keeping the law, statutes, commandments. That's your good works. With good works. Let's, let's, let's prove that. Because we got to prove all things. Your good works should be the law, statutes, commandments. Let's, let's prove that. And that should, that should take precedence over the... Right. That's and, and that's what he's saying. And exactly. The book of Exodus says that's exactly what he's saying. So let's go ahead. Chapter 18, verse 20. Uh -huh. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. So we got to do the commandments. But give me the one in uh, Romans. Somebody else is predicated with somebody else gonna fall or fail or stand. That's difficult. 
do. Yep. Take that responsibility, that spiritual responsibility. Saying I'm not just looking out for me and mine, but I'm looking out for the community, people behind me, important. That's 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 big. That's and that, that's just the love of your people. That's yeah. the love of God. Yeah. God, that God actually tells us we gotta love it. Christ yeah. gave uh, the commandment that we love, just teach, we just love our us. neighbors as we love us. ourselves. Teach, that's us. right. Yeah. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.